So you've got one of these guys, an external hard drive. Maybe you use it to store all of your song files. Maybe you're using it to store tons of footage for videos you're recording and, and editing. Maybe you've got all of your edit projects on here. Maybe you're a photographer and you've got photos on here. Maybe you're a graphic designer and all your illustrator files are on here with all your assets. And you do a good job of backing up your data. You do a good job of making sure that everything's secure and redundant, but mistakes happen. Happen to you, happen to me. On this drive, I had my first music video. All the footage, all the assets, all of the comps and renders, because there's a lot of After Effects work we have to do on this video, and the project file, all right here. I thought that I had backed it up onto my Drobo, but it was literally the only folder I hadn't backed up because when I was doing the transfer, I was also working on the music video itself. Then I bought a new PC. And then I installed Windows on that new PC with this plugged in. Somehow, and I still don't really know how, it corrupted the drive. I believe it formatted it from NTFS to FAT32. And my heart sank into my chest. Luckily, I've recovered tons of files from dead or broken or corrupted or formatted drives before. I've even recovered files I intentionally permanently deleted. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how that process works and we'll see if I can get back all the files for this music video shoot from this poor, poor formatted drive. Let's get into it. Now, as I said, I had about 700 gigs of footage and project files and renders and After Effects on this drive. It was about four days ago when I first realized that something had happened and now I didn't have all that footage. So the first thing that I did was I unplugged it from my computer. To understand how you can recover your lost files, first we have to understand what happens to files when you delete them or when you format a drive or when a drive gets corrupted. In any of these scenarios, your files are still there. If a drive gets corrupted, it simply means that there's a mechanical issue with the, with the motor inside that spins the drive or there's been some damage to the actual disks, but that doesn't mean that the files are lost. It just means the computer cannot read them. If you delete files from a drive or if you format a drive, those files also aren't gone because computers don't actually delete files from drives. They simply mark the sector of the drive that houses those files for deletion. So basically let's imagine that this square right here on the drive is all of my footage. If I were to intentionally go in this drive and delete that footage, it simply says, hey, this square, you can use it now. So those files aren't actually gone until some other file comes in and overwrites those sectors. So the most important thing when you realize that you're missing files is to not write anything to the drive. And this can happen accidentally a million different ways. So the first thing I did was I, un I unplugged this from my computer. So we know that if your drive is corrupted, it may be for a mechanical reason that you just need to fix and you you'll be able to read your files, but also boot sectors can get corrupted, which means that your computer just doesn't treat it as a drive. Furthermore, partition tables, which is essentially the, the phone book for the drive can get corrupted or deleted. Or in the case of reformatting, they're intentionally deleted. So if this is an NTFS file system, which is one of the two most common ways to format a drive, and then you format it to FAT32, if you're not putting any files on it, nothing's really changed. The partition table was deleted, but that's about it. And you can both recover files and partition tables from drives where that has happened. The one thing that can be very, very detrimental is if your disk is heavily fragmented. Let's imagine that I store a file onto this drive and it's in a single sector. So if I scan the drive sector by sector, it's gonna find the sector or sectors that my file is in and it's going to pull it. But let's say I start dropping more and more files onto this drive. It's gonna fill up soon enough, but it doesn't fill up every sector. Most modern drives will preferentially load clean sectors so that your files aren't all mixed up with each other. Makes it easier to read, but if you need to max out the space on a drive, it's going to start looking for parts of sectors that are unfilled. This is when fragmentation occurs. Your files can be fragmented across many different sectors of your drive. And that makes it very hard to recover because we're going to use 
a recovery software to recover the files from this drive. And the recovery software is just gonna see fragments of a file, not really know how to put it back together. Which is why you end up with a lot of false positives when you use software to recover files from a drive. So let's take a look at what I'm doing to rescue this drive. We know that the first step is to unplug the drive or disconnect it or not have it spin. Because regardless of what your issue is, there's nothing beneficial to just leaving it in there. Either files can get overwritten or a mechanical issue can exacerbate, disks can start to grind together, which has happened to me before. So you definitely want to get it into a safe place as soon as possible until you decide what to do next. Now what I did next was I downloaded my favorite utility for recovering files, Test Disk. Test Disk actually comes with two softwares. They are both free. One is Test Disk and one is Photo Rec for photo recovery. Test Disk is a software that's used to recover lost partition tables, corrupted master file tables, which tell you all the files in a drive. Test Disk will scan the drive, look for damaged boot sectors that correspond to a partition, and it will try to repair them or restore them. It, it has multiple functions for doing this. Now, I've already run Test Disk on this drive and didn't work. Test Disk found the lost partition. So there's the FAT32 partition and then the formatted over partition NTFS, which has all my footage on it. If I can recover that NTFS partition table, then I have a directory for all my files and I can just copy them over to another drive. Good to go. Unfortunately, the test disk process did not work. I could see the partition. I could change it from FAT32 to NT, and it was labeled as FAT32 when it's actually an NTFS partition. And I was able to change it to an NTFS partition. But when looking for the boot sector and the backup boot sector, which is a fail safe in case that corrupts, they were both bad. Lucky me. So I had to run the second software that comes when you download Test Disk, which is Photo Rec. Photo Rec is exactly what it sounds like. It was developed to recover photographs from a corrupted drive, but it also recovers song files and Premiere Pro files and Pro Tools files and MP3s and Waves. Also recovers text. Pretty much any file you could want off a corrupted drive, it's gonna recover. Photo Rec literally scans the whole drive sector by sector and pulls out any data that it can find. And this is where fragmentation becomes an issue because PhotoRec doesn't recognize fragments. It recognizes files in a series. So let's say I've got sector one, right? It's got half of my video file in it. The other half is in sector two. Well, PhotoRec can recognize that the, the first sector only has a part of a file in it. So it'll save that and it'll read the next sector and see if any files in that next sector correspond to this fragment. Try to mash them together and make you a usable file, which is it's done several times for me and it's very helpful. If your disk is fragmented, files are not stored in sequential sectors. They're stored all over the place so PhotoRec can't understand what's going on. Furthermore, now with drives creeping into the multiple terabyte territory, PhotoRec takes a long time to run. Right now, PhotoRec's been running on this computer for 51 hours and 16 minutes. And it still has about 11 hours before it's gonna complete its first pass. But good news. I've already recovered most of the music video. Most of the footage right back in my Drobo where I want it to be. So Photo Rec does work even if it takes forever and a day. But because of the fragmentation and because of the accidental formatting issue, there's tons of files that Photo Rec has recognized as greater than a gigabyte, some greater than 10 gigabytes, but it can't put them all the way together. So it pops them out as an SWF file. SWF stands for shockwave flash. It's a type of flash animation, but I don't have any shockwave flash animations on this drive. It's MP4s, .MP4. PhotoRec just can't find the part of the file that tells it it's an MP4, which also probably houses some crucial data for making the file work. So I've got tons of files I'll never recover and some of those might be from the music video, I'm not sure. Further, when you run PhotoRec on a drive that's been corrupted and you only need a couple of files from it, like let's say you had tons of data on this and you deleted most of it and then you had the data you wanted on it using only a very little bit of space from the drive and then something happened. When you run PhotoRec, it's gonna find a lot of that stuff you deleted initially, which means it's gonna take longer than it actually needs to take, but that's fine. You want a program like this to be dumb because it's not gonna write anything you don't want to the drive and it's going to work much better for all the reasons I've already gone over. Now, a great 
fail safe that I just don't do because don't have enough time and I know that photo rec and test disk aren't going to do anything I don't want them to do to my drive but another thing you should do if you have a corrupted drive or a data loss situation is to just copy the drive don't work off the drive because you might accidentally write something or delete something further or corrupt something or if you've got a mechanical issue start grinding those disks together which can be bad 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 so what professional data recovery specialists will do is they'll make a, an image image copy of the of the drive which is called an ISO file ISO and then they'll make a copy of that and they'll work off of that clone. If something bad happens or something they can't fix, great. Make another clone, work off of that. Completely safe, completely lossless, and you can always work backwards. This also opens up your ability to send the original drive to a data recovery specialist if you've got something really important on here and you just need it back and nothing's working. So I do recommend running that process and you can use a software called DD Rescue to create a cloned image file of the drive and work off of that. Probably much safer than what I've done here. So with only about 10% of the recovery process left to go, I'm pretty confident that I'll rescue this music video, which is great because it would be terrible to have my first music video ever be lost to some idiot, dumb, mundane detail mistake like leaving a drive in when you're loading windows onto a new PC. <laughs> Right. But I'm very happy that I am able to get the files back. And if you've ever been in this incredibly unfortunate scenario where your heart just sinks into your chest and you feel like you've lost all that work, don't fret, there's still hope for you yet. Now in this, I've gone over test disk and photo rec, but there are others that can help you recover files. First, don't use Ease US. Ease us or whatever it's called. If you search for data recovery or fail drive or whatever, you're gonna get Ease us. They're very good at SEO, not so great at creating software that safely recovers files from a broken hard drive. I recommend that if you wanna run more passes on a failed drive or deleted drive, in order to get more files than you did from PhotoRec, that you use softwares like Recuva, R-E-C-U-V-A, which is made by the folks at CCleaner, which is a great software to just have on on your computer at all times, or Autopsy, which is another serious person software that real data forensics people use. So you now know all of this useless until one day the worst happens and then it's very useful information that I know about how to recover footage or music or artwork or anything that's important to you from a drive that has gone sour. And for creatives, I know that this is gonna happen at least once in your life, unless you're like the 1% of the 1% of people who do everything the right way the first time. If you are, congratulations, you don't need this video. This is for us fuck ups. I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. This has been just a little tutorial for my fellow creatives who have definitely had this happen before. If you like this video, please like the video and subscribe. We drop tons of stuff about creative business and creative pursuit and videography and audio and songwriting and graphic design and other stuff and Kenny Kaminsky and things like that. And you can get three of those videos a week, just click subscribe. But that's enough of my jibber jabber. I got to piece back together this music video and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>